What is going on Falcons fans, Logan here. Welcome back to Rise Up Rundown, and if you're new here, welcome. So last week we talked about why I think Tevin Coleman and Grady Jarrett should stay on the team, and if I'm hearing this right, I think Grady Jarrett is gonna stay, but Tevin Coleman is gonna leave. As you know from the last episode, I think it's a big mistake if the Falcons released this guy, and who's all to blame for this? Well, most fingers would point to Thomas Dimitrov, our general manager, and is Thomas Dimitrov making the right moves? Well, let's just dive more into that. Sorry for the mic change a little bit, but let's look at what I find to be the right move from Dimitrov first so far. And the first one, if this does happen, is paying Grady Jarrett. I know in the last episode, I made a pretty big talk on why I think they should keep Grady Jarrett, but I'll just kind of briefly summarize what all I said in the last episode and just put it into this one. Basically, I think this guy is developing into a really big playmaker for the team. Not just on film, but also even statistically. I mean, his sack ratio goes up every single year. So clearly, this guy is getting better. And I also noticed that he's a pretty big leader, and whenever he makes a big play, the defense noticeably gets really hyped up. So if he can develop the team with all of his leadership skills, it's not all that crazy to think that he could develop whoever we're gonna draft and make him a strong defensive lineman, because let's be real, the Falcons are obviously gonna draft a defensive lineman in this year's draft, because the draft is so stacked with defensive linemen. If we have Grady Jarrett, Tack McKinley, who's also developing into a strong player, and then whoever we draft, and he just learns from Grady Jarrett, our defensive line would be stacked. And as a Falcons fan, we've never really had a good defensive line. So this would feel really good. <laughs> so I think it is the right move to pay Grady Jarrett. Another smart move that I think Dimitrov is making, and this isn't some mind-blowing, like, genius move that Dimitrov has made, and it's not some, oh, if Dimitrov never made this move, the Falcons would suck. You know, it's just a conservative good move they made is paying Matt Schaub. Now, look, yeah, it's Matt Schaub. I get it. But... To be fair, he was never really on a good offense his whole career. Like with the Texans, before Deshaun Watson came in, did the Texans ever have a good offense to work with? And then he was with the Ravens for a little while, and the Ravens were a defensive team and not an offensive team. Falcons are obviously known for being an offensive team, and with him being behind Matt Ryan and even Dirk Coder, who I do think will be a great offensive coordinator for the Falcons, I mean, he could develop into a pretty strong backup quarterback. Now, it's not like we should expect a lot from him anyway, because not only did we give Matt Ryan a huge contract extension, so it's not like we were going to draft another quarterback or just pick another one up. But also, Matt Ryan is always healthy, so it's not like Matt Shub ever gets in. Uh, but even still, you know, I think it was just a, a conservative, good move to just keep Matt Shop. And we, we can just slowly develop him into being a great player. And also, another thing I noticed, besides Nick Foles, is there any other backup quarterback out there that you know that's like a big, like, oh no, we gotta watch out for him? Like, probably not. So it was just a good move to just keep a backup quarterback. And then another smart move that I noticed is basically removing most of the defensive front. There's three names that I noticed that are possibly going to be free agents this year is Bruce Irvin, Terrell McLean, and Derek Shelby. Now, I don't think they should remove the whole defensive front. Obviously, they might pay Grady Jarrett. They're going to keep Vic Beasley and they're also going to keep Tack McKinley. But I think it is the right move to release these three names that I mentioned, Bruce Irvin, Terrell McLean, and Derek Shelby, and then probably just some other names, uh, you know, no offense, but that nobody really knows about. Um, here's why I think it's the right move to release Bruce Irvin. Bruce Irvin is a big name, yes, but he's so out of his prime. Like, he's just not the way he was. And then Terrell McLean. Sorry, but if we weren't Falcons fans, who is Terrell McLean? Like, come on. <laughs> and then Derek Shelby. I don't even know if he had like a stellar career with the Dolphins, but uh, with the Falcons, for sure, he never really made big moves. <laughs> uh, so I think it is the right move to just kind of remove players that you, to be honest, don't really need. 
and then just draft another defensive lineman because again we're gonna draft a defensive lineman they're probably gonna do that they do that they honestly do that every single year they draft a defensive lineman so if we remove players that we don't really need and draft someone into being big playmakers for the defense i would say it is the right move to release the defensive lineman that we just don't really need but now let's talk about some moves that i personally don't think dimitrov is doing right and the first one is that they're possibly going to release Tevin Coleman. And like Grady Jarrett, I know I made a pretty big talk on why I think they should keep Tevin Coleman. But I'll just kind of briefly summarize what all I said in last week's episode and just put it into this one. Tevin Coleman may only be a second string running back. But when you're a second string running back and you're on a pass heavy team, putting up 800 yards and nine total touchdowns, I would say this guy is a needed weapon for the Falcons. And Devontae Freeman has his fair share of injuries, so when he's out, who are you going to have after that? Ido Smith is like, okay, but I mean, like, he's nowhere near Tevin Coleman. So as a second string running back, and you're on a pass heavy team, and you produce big numbers like he did in 2018, why would you release him? I just personally don't think it makes sense, and the Falcons are going to really need to improve their running game if Tevin Coleman does get released because then it's on the shoulders of Devontae Freeman, and if he's out, does Edo Smith have what it takes to take that Tevin Coleman-like role? We'll see, but I don't know. I think it's a mistake if they release Tevin Coleman. Another move that I personally, I'm sorry, but I just don't think is the right move from Dimitrov is keeping Vic Beasley. Like, cool, you were the NFL sack leader in 2016 with like, what, 15 and a half sacks? But he is so out of his prime. Like every single play he's pushed around, he's too small for the position. And because of how strong all the defensive linemen are in this year's NFL draft, I just hope that they don't miss out on picking up one of the great players. And by keeping Vic Beasley, they just need to replace Vic Beasley. He's so out of his prime. If he improves this year, then fine. I guess it was the right move. But, you know, if he still does very poor this year, I mean, it's your fault. You wanted to keep Vic Beasley. And then this one's a little too early to talk about. But I still kind of wanted to get it out of the way. It's Julio Jones' contract. Of course, there was a big contract conflict for Julio last year. And he never got his contract extension, even though he was well worth the money honestly i don't really need to explain why julio is worth the money the only thing i will say is that after having just three touchdowns in 2017 he got even more in 2018 with eight and not to mention that when he got his first touchdown in 2018 the whole team surrounded him with love i would say that the whole entire falcons community loves this guy and if they don't pay julio jones this is going to be a huge mistake. You are releasing your best player, and there's also probably going to be drama, not just from the fan base, but also probably even from the team. So it's a little early to predict like what will happen with Julio, but they they need to give Julio Jones a contract extension, I think, by this year. So overall, Thomas Dimitrov is just kind of doing what he does every year. He's just being conservative. The Falcons are never really known for picking up this big free agent or drafting this superstar or making like some mind-blowing move by releasing one of their biggest playmakers. Again, they're just being conservative. They do this every year. They changed the coaching staff a little bit, which by the way, I do think we're going to be good with Dirk Coder. But when it comes to players, no surprises. And we've been fine all these years with Dimitrov anyway. Like even when we were 8-8, eight and eight, we were never really like a bottom dweller. The question is, can we get back to that Super Bowl culture? Hopefully so, but we'll just have to see. All right, guys, make sure to smash that like button, blow up the comment section, and definitely hit that subscribe button so that way you don't miss any weekly content. Again, new episodes every Tuesday and Friday at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern, and I will see you this Friday at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern. Rise up.